Hey guys, in the last episode, we built a custom HTTP server completely from scratch using just Ruby. We have it set up to create a TCP server, we listen for connections, we start new threads, and then we process those connections, and we serve up files that the user asked for. So this works great, and we're able to test this out by opening up the root route, which loads the index.html file, and other files that are in that views directory will be rendered out as well. And if we try and access something that does not exist, we're gonna get a 404 error like we would expect. So this works great, but we need to actually build one that's useful to run application code. So we want something that can run Ruby code, and that is where Rack comes in. You probably heard of Rack. Rack is a standardized way to implement a web framework in Ruby. So this is really interesting. Basically, the web, um, web servers like Puma, Thin, Unicorn, um, WebRick, all of those have an implementation that supports Rack. And so they can send the request to Rack. Rack will handle that when you build your application using Rack. It um, will be able to process that and send a response back that the web server will understand. So it's just a standardized way of handling that. That's what Rails uses underneath, and there's actually a whole Rack middleware stack that will do different types of processing on each HTTP request. So this is a great um, tool, and it would be awesome if our little web server could actually use that to boot up. So we can actually modify our route method here to run the Rack application and get the response back from it, and we can send that response across the um, TCP uh, client and socket that we have open. So what we can do is let's just comment out this example that we have right now, which just renders files, and we'll replace that with a Rack application.